delighted to be here today and talking to an audience that's uh, clearly so knowledgeable about uh, the needs of our passengers and customers and learning, hoping to learn something myself as well. Because, of course, we never stop learning, do we? Of course, one thing I learned at a very early age is that as, a, as an operator, and I am a railway operator, that is, that is the, that's at the core of my um, profession and my skill, um, uh, then, uh, then, of course, contingency is your best friend. So in terms of being able to sort of change things around, we can make stuff like that work, can't we? I'd like to spend about 15 minutes taking you through um, a bit of a description about what we've been doing for the last year now uh, with network rail and southwest trains um, in, in, in running the services out of Waterloo. I'm going to describe to you the structure that we've created um, because it is, it is quite complex. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what we've achieved during that time, some of the challenges that there are, because whilst working together um, sounds very logical, doesn't it? Of course, it does bring with it challenges, and I'll, I'll, I'll share some of those. And then some very real examples about things that have changed as a result of working together. OK, so here we go. The South Western Railway is um, the title, the, the, the identity, not a brand, but an identity that we've created to describe what happens when Southwest Trains and Network Rail are working together in the Alliance. Being, having a job title of uh, Managing Director of Southwest Trains and Network Rail Alliance isn't really very snappy, doesn't really convey anything very well, and actually for our frontline teams in, 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 in Network Rail and Southwest Trains, it lacks any sense of cohesiveness. So we created an identity um, uh, just a few months ago. Uh, it wasn't the first thing we did, but a few months ago. And you can see some of that in, in, in what you have here today. And one of the key elements to it is this word railway. <laughs> Rather different from a trains or an infrastructure or what have you, we're a railway and we're providing services for customers and passengers. And I'll take you through that. So what have we done? Well, what we have done is create an alliance. We have not created a new <coughs> business because that would be very difficult under European legislation. What we have done is created an organisation that holds all the resources, all the people, the obligations, the costs and the income from both Southwest Trains and Network Rail Wessex, and we've created one organisation to run those two things in parallel. It isn't an entity, as I said, that would be difficult, so the, the entities report separately. Southwest <laughs> Trains will file its report to Companies House in the way it already does, or, or, and, 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 and network rather the same. But we do have an alliance set of accounts. So I have a P&L for the alliance and, and, and hopefully very soon a capital programme for the alliance. And I report that through to a governance board, um, which essentially consists of the two shareholders, 50% stagecoach, 50% network rail. Okay? So in effect, I run it as if it were an organisation. To all intents and purposes, it is a virtual organisation. All the staff still respond and are employed by the two uh, companies from which their, their, their employment contracts come. But almost the aim is to sort of think, well, it doesn't really matter what it says on, the back, on, on, on your badge, whether it says Network Rail or Southwest Trains. Actually, what, what it matters is what we're trying to do in delivering our services. We've taken on, then, everything within the Wessex route um, of Network Rail, which not only um, means looking after all of the Southwest Trains services, but all those, also the services that we offer uh, to Freightliner, DBS, Southern, First Great Western and Arriva cross country. Must be a sign of a maturing industry, of course, because, of course, many of these organisations are direct competitors with Stagecoach. So the fact that actually we've been able to build the trust so that um, we can deliver track access for those, uh, so, uh, th 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 those, those operators um, in a manner which they're comfortable with, and we have over the first year, um, indeed one of, the, one of the operators said they felt more looked after now than they had under the old arrangements, that's been a real challenge and something we set out to achieve. I'm very proud of that. Um, and I think we've tried to do something to resolve this issue about customers and passengers. You know the industry always has this debate about do we call people passengers or customers? I mean, it's a bit of an academic debate, isn't it? But the way that, I, that we work in that in the Alliance is that um, passengers are people. Customers are actually just what it says. So um, DBS is a customer of mine. Freightliner is a customer of mine. Passengers are people, and, 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 and it, there's some distinction there. And that's quite important in terms of how we communicate that. Before we set up, of course, there was a comprehensive safety validation process, which I won't um, take you through the full details of, but fair to say that, 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 that as with all good things on the railway, it, it involved lots of paper um, and lots of creativity and indeed lots of lawyers. Lots of discussion with the staff and the unions and we've started uh, in, in, at the end of April last year. So we've been away just over a year now. Some really encouraging things is not only have we changed the way we operate, um, Network Rail have adapted them, some of their structures to allow the alliance to be successful, and ORR 
have changed their structure as well, so that we have a single regulator um, which is helping us make decisions quickly. So that's what we put together. The aim of it was to create a single management team. So this is the Alliance Executive. Um, as you can see from the very crude organisation chart at the top, um, it is organised along the lines of a traditional railway business. We have eight functional directors, each responsible for an area of the business, um, and, and, and I'm privileged to lead that team. You can't see the detail, but, but for example, there is an infrastructure, Jim Morgan, some, known to some of you as infrastructure director, he's in charge of all the infrastructure. Mark Stewart, operations director, he's in charge of all the operations. Doesn't matter whether it's a signalling issue, or a train driving issue, or a planning issue, or a control issue, it's operations, it's Mark. Jake, customer services, uh, again, all customer services, so Waterloo, which is theoretically a network rail major station, um, uh, uh, as, as opposed to the normal southwest train stations, all managed as one. Common sense, really. And what it's allowed us to do is to see the business in a very different way. Because rather than seeing part of a business, which is what each of the two teams saw separately, we now see one business. And that's really helpful in terms of making sure that we're making the right decisions. Um, and, and, and it's fair to say that within this team, I'm very encouraged that each of them having split responsibilities for both network rail responsibilities and Southwest Trains responsibilities, you know, when we were trying to work out how we would make all this work, it seemed incredibly complex. Going back 18 months now, two years now, you know, and there are times when I wonder whether it would be practicable. In actual fact, it's working really well. It's actually very simple because it's very logical. And that really, that really helps. So despite the voluminous amounts of contractual stuff that sits behind it, in practical application, it allows for some really great discussions. And of course, then between the team, when we come together, as I bring my team together every Monday morning for a, a, an exec uh, meeting every week, it doesn't matter who you're employed by or even what your job title is. This team and the 6,000 people that work for us are entirely responsible for delivering a safe operation of our, our railway and delivering the services to our passengers and customers. And if one of the colleagues is having a tough time because their part of the organisation is struggling, another colleague can help out. It doesn't matter what the labels are or what the contractual arrangements are, it's all about delivering the end objective. So a year in, what have you found? Well, I've lost a lot of hair. I have to say, in 23 years in the railway, I've done some fairly... Um, Interesting things at times, you know, I was at Eurostar the first time that we didn't run trains through the Channel Tunnel because it snowed. Um, but I have to say, this, this experience has been um, a real challenge. Um, it's been really, really hard work. Um, there is, it's a huge organisation, it's a big thing to bring together. Um, and, and there have been times when if I had a magic wand, I might have taken a different approach. But I'm really glad that we've stuck with it and, and, and that we've persevered through some very challenging um, uh, issues because, of course, bringing organisations together and people together is a tough thing to do at the same time as running a railway on, the, on a daily basis. But what do we know? Well, perception has been replaced by fact. My goodness, there was a lot of perception. Even though I've been around the industry a lot, I was staggered about how much I didn't know about infrastructure maintenance. Really staggered. And actually, in finding out, it answered so many of those frustrations that I've been carrying around for years. Why don't they just do that? I tell you, the first time that you have an embankment washed away by flood water and you realise that you need you know, three new sections of track, several thousands of tonnes of ballast, and, 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 and to, to rebuild that all, the first time that happens and it's your responsibility to put it back, it makes you think, well, actually, it's quite easy just to expect someone else to do it, but when you've got to do it yourself and it's your team that are going to do it, it's quite challenging. When I understood just how little time there was overnight to repair the tracks outside Waterloo, I understood why we've got some of our reliability problems. And of course, in that understanding and that clarity of vision, it allows us to do things differently. And of course, all of this is for the customer. The great thing we've been able to do in, in, in setting up the way this works financially is that if we deliver good performance, if we deliver good performance, that financially works for Southwest Trains and Network Rail. If we deliver bad performance, it penalises both Network Rail and Southwest Trains. Last year, we had a tough year, actually, very tough year, and it cost us money. So people say, how much money did you make at the Alliance? Not a penny. Um, but we do have in place a regime that has allowed us to invest in getting things right, and I'll talk more about that. So perception replaced by fact, that's been useful for me, it's been useful for a lot of our staff, because of course, this 
them issue or, you know, it's all very easy if someone else has got to do it, it's demolished. A lot of the issues we've identified were genuine issues that needed solving but couldn't be solved because they were, they were so wrapped up in the motion. And we can absolutely make better, faster decisions. There's no doubt about that. You know, Monday morning, the decisions we make just, just like that, just like any normal organisation would. Whereas previously, it would have required an escalation, it would have required phone call, perhaps negotiation. All that's gone. Um, and that allows us to take a system approach, because that's one of the things, one of the key findings. People say, where's the, where's the inefficiency in the railway industry? McNulty had a view. Actually, from my perspective, it's all lost in the, the fact that we don't take a system approach to how we make our investments. And each organisation would do the right thing. There's great examples of Network Rail doing the right thing, and great examples of Southwest Trains doing the right thing, and the regulator doing the right thing, and the DFT doing the right thing, and you put it all together and you end up the wrong thing. Because actually there was no coordination of all those elements. Everyone was doing the right thing for their organisation um, as they should. But when you put the whole lot together, it doesn't add up. And again, that ability to see that and engage with DFT, OOR, and Network Rail to start thinking about how do we make better joined up decisions is a key part of this. I've talked about focus on customers and passengers, but what else is there to focus on? Because if we're successful there, then we'll be successful financially, and vice versa. If we're not successful with our customers and passengers, we won't be successful financially. Actually, we did a staff employee, we did an employee survey of all our 6,000 people, and we found out that despite the fact that, um, uh, that, that, that Southwest Trains and Network Rail had taken a very different path over the last uh, 17 years, um, the, uh, the, the satisfaction scores between the two different groups of staff were within six points of each other. And actually, many of the areas that the, 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 the teams felt were successful were the same in both parts. This is critical to how we provide a good service to, to our passengers. So actually, many things in common. And I've talked about some of the differences in, in, in processes um, and some of the different uh, gaps in knowledge that, that, uh, that, that existed in the organisation. Quite, quite remarkable how little some of our senior managers knew about the organisation of which they were part. I can't stand here now and say that it's produced better value for taxpayers and shareholders, but I'm absolutely convinced that it will do. It's also proved that, of course, anything is possible. Because two years ago, when this was first being mooted and discussed with the Secretary of State, actually, it seemed at some times impossible that we would be able to do this and not have complaints from other operators. Or, or, and actually, it's, it, it, it's happened and it's working. So, what do we understand? Um, we, there's lots we didn't understand. Um, big focus on performance. Anthony mentioned uh, performance in your introduction. Um, and, and very clearly within that, um, we, we now understand that some of the regimes that are in place in the railway industry are not well placed to actually deliver the performance that the customers want. Actually, you know, and, and, and I won't go through that, you can see that up there, but we were focusing on 30% of the total delays. Didn't actually understand where the rest was coming from, but we do now, and because of the fact that our finances are joined up, I've been able to invest in additional staff on platforms to dispatch trains in a way that a normal talk wouldn't be able to do, because the performance regime doesn't support that sort of investment. Um, Overcrowding is having a much greater effect on the delivery of the timetable that's been understood, and we've, we're focusing on what we, we've got some actions that we've implemented to, to, to change that. And absolutely, the balance between the track access contract and the time that is required for maintenance was completely delinked. It's no wonder that we were struggling in some cases, because there's no, there's no link between the timetable and the amount of time needed for maintenance. On a daily basis, it's allowed us to have very, very clear command structures now. So rather than, even though Waterloo's had a joint control for a number of years, there was still an SWT control manager and a network rail control manager. Now there's one, there's one service recovery plan, and that has allowed us to reduce our delay per incident by 11% over the first year. Even though we had lots of, is in, uh, lots of issues last year, DPI delay per incident has come down by 11%. That's really, really important. And we can make decisions in the best interest of all of our passengers and customers. Quite a radical policy at times, but it is absolutely, to my mind, about restoring train services as quickly as possible and how we communicate what those plans are is key. So we have developed, for the first time, contingency plans for all of our service groups, which we can implement when things go wrong, because we can advise those in advance to passengers and our staff so they can give the good advice. MPS, um, well, the MPS results that came out last week um, identified, in effect, where we knew we, where we hoped we would be successful, passenger communication, now 50,000 people on Twitter. But at the same time, um, overall satisfaction dropped, which isn't a surprise because punctuality has been declining on this railway for the last three years. And, 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 and as you said, Anthony, that's always going to make a big impact. 
talk through some of these points about um, uh, how, how we're closer to the customer. Our network rail employed staff, um, are, are, um, including the maintenance teams, are now very, very focused um, on the customer. And uh, you know, if we have a, a small possession over in the morning, it's now regular to see a note that comes through from the maintenance teams apologising for that delay. Sometimes it's the right thing to do to have a small possession overrun because it actually allows work to be done so that we don't start the day with a speed restriction, perhaps. We're able to take much more balanced decisions now than we were before. It has been tough. I've mentioned that. And, of course, reorganising um, an organisation takes time, safety validation, job descriptions, all that sort of stuff. We've got two headquarters, so we've split some of our people. Um, and um, we've had to struggle with some particular challenges like industrial relations, where we have, uh, you know, South West Trains employees got 2.5% pay award last year, Network Rail staff got a larger one. So that does create tension in those organisations. And there are a number of issues that we've been focusing on which previously hadn't been identified or were too difficult to solve. And we've been able to tackle some of those. They will have benefits going forward. The fact we ran our first train into Waterloo International a few months ago is a significant step forward because that station has been empty for six years. The biggest challenge and certainly the biggest surprise has been the understanding that the level of crowding has had in the destruction of the timetable and, and, and effect on passenger satisfaction. Um, and we've been able to work as one organisation to firstly identify what the solution is, because it wasn't a lack of will, it was just the fact there hadn't been a solution identified. There was nothing in the RUS that solved this problem for our passengers. We've now got a solution. It's with the Department for Transport, and we're hoping for good news very shortly to allow us to spend a significant amount of money rebuilding Waterloo and procuring new rolling stock to increase capacity very significantly. As it stands at the moment, the red is the provision, the blue is the required, um, these, these, these trains are carrying 100 million more passengers than they were 15 years ago, yet the size of the railway is basically the same. And there's a quick summary of what we will achieve with our en enhancement plan um, with some potential new trains there to deliver it. But there's absolutely no doubt that we would deliver those schemes faster, probably two years earlier than would otherwise have been possible. So I've whizzed you through that. Thank you very much. And, and, and I'll be happy to take questions later. <laughs>